Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you a cool beveled text effect that you can use with your 3D text or logos. And uh, the effect here is that we have uh, this beveled text and um, it also has a seamless transition into uh, the backdrop behind it. So. If we take a look from a distance, it's almost as if this was uh, punched up from the back and uh, this was the indent that was left. Okay, so let's take a look at how to set this up. Uh, just excuse my voice, if you will. I have a code right now, um, but uh, these tutorials have to go out, so I'm, um, I'm on my last few words, but uh, hopefully I should be still uh, audible to you guys. Anyway, I'm going to create a new project. <coughs> and uh, let's uh, start with a text spline. And I'm just going to type out the word bevel like this. And I'll be using a font called Bitsumishi. So it's all the way up here somewhere, right there. And I'm also going to increase the horizontal spacing to 5. Uh, this is because by the time we add that uh, curved effect that transitions into the back wall, uh, you need enough space between the letters. So, you know, you will get a feel for this as you use this effect more and more. Uh, but for this particular font with the default settings, I think uh, a horizontal spacing of 5 or maybe 6 is going to work quite well. Next time I'm going to hit C to make this into an editable object and uh, I'll go to the front view and maybe can this better because the distance between the B and the E for example is a lot larger than the distance between E and V so I'll get all these letters and move them to the right and then maybe adjust this distance too and uh, you must always try and do this when you are working with 3D type. Try and always have good kerning. It really does make a difference. Okay, so when you have your kerning finished, you are now ready to create the bevel effect. First, you need to select all the points. So press Ctrl and A. And then right click and uh, you want to go to chamfer. Sorry, not chamfer. You want to go to create outline and uh, make sure you create a new object so just tick that and then here you will just hold left click and drag to the left to create some inner outlines based on the original selection I think about here it's gonna work for me maybe a bit more and when you release left click you will get a new object which is that new set of outlines Okay, from here, I will uh, go back to my uh, live selection and modeling mode. And let's bring this out, maybe minus 20. So the inner spline, we're just gonna push this out like this. And then we'll generate some geometry based on these two splines. So if we go to the nerves icon, we can get loft nerves and drop the text and uh, the other spline into the loft nerves. And when we do that, we will start getting some geometry. But uh, there's a problem here. That is, the way this geometry is being created, there's like a twist in the middle here. This is because when you create an outline, the new outline that you end up creating, uh, the points that make up that outline are in a reverse sequence of your original uh, points. So if I get this new set of points, go to point mode, I still have all of them selected. I will right click and reverse sequence. And when I do that, this sequence will now align with the back sequence. And now you can see we have our letters. And then from here, we can go and make some uh, enhancements. First, we will add um, more segments. So if we go to loft nerves, 
go to go to the object tab and set the mesh subdivision U to 200. This will just smooth out any edges. And let's uh, go to the caps and add a fillet cap to the end, not the start. The start is the back and the end is the front. But uh, that actually could be the other way around, depending on how you lay this out. And I'm going to put the cap radius as just one. And I'll put three steps. So I end up with uh, this beveled text with some nice uh, smooth edges. Now I have another problem which is on the inside here we're getting some strange uh, deformation and this happened when we enabled uh, caps. And uh, a way to fix this and just another way to enhance uh, the look of your text is to chamfer all the corners. And let me show you what the chamfer tool does. If I go to the front view and shut off loft nerves for now, I can uh, select all the points uh, that are just straight up corners. So if I go to rectangle selection, these are all corners right here. And I have both splines selected by the way, so it's getting points from both the splines. Uh, these two right here are corners, but the rest are curves. So I will leave them because they are already curved. And then the rest of the letters are, co are made up of corners, so I will just select all of them whilst holding shift. And then I will go to right click and chamfer. And we'll set a radius of not point uh, 5 maybe and hit apply. And what this will do is basically curve every corner like this. I think 0.5 is too small. Let me try 1.5 and hit apply. And this may vary depending on your style and what you're trying to pull off. But uh, I think for me, 1.5 is going to work well. There is a flat feature which you can turn on to not have the curve, but I think the curve really helps. So I will keep it on. And uh, now when I re-enable loft nerves, you will now see that my edges, uh, we don't have any uh, abrupt corners, all the edges are smooth and now also the geometry on the inside is fixed and looks a lot better. You still have some uh, issues in some areas but uh, this will disappear when we apply the textures. Okay, looking uh, pretty good. One more thing you can do uh, because at this point some people may still have problems with the way the geometry looks and um, if you do you need to shut off loft nebs for now, go to your two splines, and you basically need to change what's called the starting point. If I go to the inner spline, let's say I set my starting point to this point right here. So right click, set first point. And this is indicated by a blue line which comes back to be white on the other side. And I'll go to my outer spline I just need to match this up to the starting point of the inner spline. So they have to be, uh, for example, in the same corner relative to each other. And um, when you do this, all your geometry will line up perfectly. And uh, if you still have problems, then you can try and choose a different starting point or you can uh, use a different font. But uh, anyway, this looks pretty good. Let's uh, get a plane now. If we go to the primitives icon, get a plane, set the width and height segments to 1 and 1, and the orientation to positive Z. And we can just increase the size. And now we want to create the effect where this transitions into that back wall, because right now that's not really happening. And uh, the way we do this is by, first of all, let's shut off the plane and let's duplicate the outer spline. And uh, it may be a good idea to rename this, so we'll call this outer and inner. And then this is outer 2 and uh, that's fine. And then what you want to do then is get an 
arc like this and set the radius to something small I'm gonna go for 7.5 and I will get the outer spline and the arc spline and put them both into a swerve nerves and this is going to generate some geometry based on that hierarchy the arc needs to be above the spline for this to work and uh, now we have this uh, lip and uh, we're going to attach this to the edge of this text uh, but you can see right now it's facing the wrong way so if I first of all make this arc into an editable object I'll hit C and then I will go to point mode in the front view and I basically want to get all of these points and I need to flip the direction which they're facing so if I go to the rotation tool I will hold shift whilst I'm rotating this to quantize the rotation segments to 10 degrees and then I need to go all the way to 180 degrees so that it's facing the other direction and this should um, make it line up with the edge of our text so now this goes out like this um, next we can uh, bring back our plane and let's move it 7.5 into the z-axis so 7.5 which is the radius of our arc if your arc radius was 10 you would move this 10 into the z-space and that's going to put it directly where this um, arc sort of curves into and that creates that uh, seamless transition effect now you'll see that we still have um, quite a hard edge here and although a texture might hide this I think it's better to just try and fix it before we apply any textures that way we can uh, have the best possible result it's fading in very nicely though into the back wall so that's good um, so we'll go to the front view once again and um, let's bring up the arc or to point mode and what I will do is remove these three points in the middle so I just have two points and then I'm going to use the handles to try and smooth this out and uh, the less points you have on any spline the smoother it's likely to be that's just a general rule of thumb anytime you work with splines in any uh, package software but anyway if we have the perspective view being displayed right now we can uh, use this to see what we're doing so if I go to the move tool or hit E for shortcut I can um, move the anchor points here and use this to line up this edge right here and I think uh, that's pretty close but I can still see uh, an edge so you just have to keep lining this up until you get something which looks good uh, for you around here looks pretty good and uh, we may want to adjust this for the top so I'll get this whole thing maybe move it out and I will go to the move tool and uh, maybe change what this spline looks like and around about here seems to be a, a nice fade okay I think that looks uh, pretty cool we can probably keep on refining this and it just depends on uh, what you're doing how what the scale is and this is gonna be different each time so what I have done because I made a I did a practice run for this tutorial I saved one of the arcs that I used so I'll remove this and just bring up uh, this arc here and I will drop it into Swift Nerves and you can see that it is much better than the one that I just had up and uh, this might be a good idea to basically save uh, not just this preset but uh, in general when you're working in Cinema 4D there are certain things that you may reuse uh, time and time again uh, to save yourself some time and to speed up your workflow it's a good idea to basically save these into some kind of preset library okay so that's the beveled text finished let's uh, do uh, some texturing and lighting 
and for this I'm going to be using uh, two of uh, uh, some of the products that I have developed for Cinema 4D. Uh, I'm going to go to my texture pack infinite. This is a collection of over 500 textures which you can find on my personal blog. And um, if I go to let's say the dirty metal, I can uh, pick any one of these, let's say this one right here. I will select everything and group object. And let's put this material onto the null. And let's set the projection mode to cubic. So now we have this. And um, I'm also going to get a light. And this is another one of my products. This one is called Light Kit 3. I'm just going to get the soft box. It's just a giant soft box up here. Maybe scale it down and maybe just rotate it in this direction a touch. And uh, maybe increase the brightness to 150 or so. So now when I render, I get this. Uh, the shadows go through geometry. So let's uh, turn those off. And uh, this is the final result. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. And I will see you in the next one.